Today, I'll be demonstrating the lab experiment preparation of an open radioactive sample. Specifically, we'll be preparing an open sulfur-35 source. Disclaimer, while I'm clearing myself for contamination, remember that working with open radionuclides requires all appropriate safety precautions and should not be attempted at home. This is a tutorial for students at the University of Cologne who have chosen the nuclear chemistry course. Here's a rough overview of today's experiment. The absolute minimum requirement for our students before starting the experiments is to understand the objective to produce a barium sulfate precipitate from a sulfur-35 containing sodium sulfate solution and barium chloride. The precipitate will be measured wet, then dried and then measured again with different shieldings. Sulfur-35 is a low energy beta minus only emitter. Materials needed, two beakers, a measuring pipette, a pasteur pipette, an assisting person with the micro pipette set to 100 microliters, a Büchner funnel with a membrane filter, tweezers, preparation frames, adhesive tape, scissors and aluminium foil and a heat lamp. Chemicals needed, 0 0.05 molar sulfuric acid, 0.1 molar barium chloride, sulfur 35 solution. Each semester will have 10 milliliters of this solution with a total activity of about 100 megabecquerel available. Procedure. Set up for vacuum filtration. Assemble the vacuum filtration apparatus. The membrane filters are very fine and are separated in their packaging by these blue separator papers. Each filter has two separation papers, so make sure to remove also the bottom separator paper as well or the filtration won't work. Prepare the preparation frame. The filter paper with the filtrate will be placed on the adhesive layer of the frame. Chemical reactions, pour 10 milliliters of 0.5 molar sulfuric acid into a large beaker. The volume of barium chloride should be half of that for complete precipitation, but a little more won't hurt. The assisting person will add 100 microliters of the sulfur 35 solution to the sulfuric acid. Heat this mixture for about 5 minutes until it's warm, not boiling. Visible condensation on the beaker is a good indicator if it's warm enough. Add enough barium chloride until no more precipitate forms. Don't be too cautious. We want large barium sulfate clumps. Take your time, the barium sulfate needs to precipitate in warm solution. After filtration, carefully transfer the membrane filter onto the prepared adhesive tape using tweezers. The barium sulfate filter cake should be facing up on the sticky tape side of the tape within the frame. Measurement. Measure the wet sample for 2 minutes. Dry the sample under a heat lamp for about 5 minutes and measure it again for yet another 2 minutes. Place a frame with household foil on the first slot, which is already prepared in the box for the lab day. Similarly, use the prepared frame with aluminium foil to shield the sample yet again. And finally, cover the sample with another layer of adhesive tape and measure again. Now this sample is considered a closed source, making the disposal much easier. Disposal, just cut out the filter through the adhesive tape and then you can easily remove everything by hand. Make sure to wrap the adhesive tape remnants in a glove, remove the glove properly and dispose of them in a bundle in the sulfur 35 waste container. Here are my measurement results. The absolute volumes are very low since I worked with a very low activity. It's more about the trend than the exact numbers to be honest. We observed that water has a shielding effect. This is the reason why we used sulfur 35 instead of phosphorus 32. Both are better only emitters but sulfur 35 emits very low beta energies, so water significantly shields these low energy betas. This explains the difference in counting rates between the dry and the wet sample. This finding is crucial for preparing also open alpha sources with polonium as well. Plastic films and adhesive tapes are similar in material and thickness while aluminium is a metal with a higher density providing better shielding. Therefore we get lower counting rates with more material between the sample and the detector. The adhesive tape is applied at the end just to simplify the disposal to be honest. Regarding the waste management, fortunately the disposal is quite straightforward for us because of this 90 day half-life of sulfur 35, meaning we can simply wait it out. We just need to label the container with the date and store it for the next three years and then there will be no remaining activity. We have a license to do that and also for phosphorus 32. For more information about sulfur 35 as a radionuclide, check out this video I've linked. It's especially recommended to inform yourself about the radionuclides you are going to work with on that day, just to get it out. A special thanks goes to the working group of analytics and fundamental nuclear chemistry from Dr. Erik Strupp and the division of nuclear chemistry at the University of Cologne and to my Patreons.
With that being said, thank you for your attention and goodbye.